Hey guys, my name's Aaron, and today we're going to take a look at three ways to take your 2D surfaces, lines, edges, and make them into 3D walls in SketchUp. All right, now I said three ways, but which we will. We'll, we'll talk about, uh, kind of see them back here. We got, we're starting from three different spots with some 2D geometry. Um, how you actually want your walls presented to you once you're done is going to change a little bit of how this works. So uh, three different options is gonna kind of multiply out depending if you want all your walls in one big mass, if you want each wall in its own container, uh, if you want holes for where doors and windows will be or if you're gonna put them in later. So there's, there's definitely an asterisk there. This is gonna multiply out. These three ways may look more like nine if you consider all the possibilities, but we're gonna look at three different ways we're getting presented with, with floor plan, wall information, and how to, in each of those situations, how to bring them up into 3D walls. Let's hop in and take a look. All right, so like I said, I have three options here. Uh, this is similar to our last video. Last video we talked about importing uh, floor plans and how to get you know usable geometry out of them. Uh, so I'm starting from three points here. Let's look at these three points real quick. This is an image. So just like we saw in the last video, this image is some bitmap based imagery here. So I don't have points I can pull from. I can inference or, or you know, I could draw an edge from about the middle of this black line here to about the middle of this black line here and see, okay, that's probably around five and a half inches. Uh, just like working off of a printed um, set of plans, the line itself is maybe an eighth or a quarter inch thick. So uh, you need to take all this with a grain of salt when I'm looking at what this actually represents. In all these situations, uh, I would recommend working alongside a dimension plan of some sort. Doesn't matter how good the information you get, there's always a possibility that there's a difference between what's in the model and the actual dimension it's supposed to represent. So I always recommend double checking against printed dimensions of some sort, whether that's a PDF or a hard copy or whatever, um, but that's a good idea. So first thing we have here, like I said, is a PDF. I, or I'm sorry, an image. I already scaled this so that it is about the right size. Again, about the right size. Since I can't pull an accu accurate dimension, uh, I can get about from this corner to this corner is about the same size as it's supposed to be in the model. Over here, I have a group. And in that group, I have a bunch of edges. So you can see this is gonna, this is gonna be a little different because I have edges, there's no groups or anything like that, they're all just loose edges. So how I interact with that is gonna be a little different from how I interact over here. All right, and then finally on the end here, I have another group, and this group actually has faces. So all of these walls are actually closed up, and I have faces for each of these. You see that these this geometry in both, all of these, the geometry actually breaks where the door or window openings are. There's a section cut through here uh, at the door window, so uh, you can see those breaks. In fact, you can see that <laughs> it looks like these were some kind of panel door because you can actually see the way it cuts through here. I have these like weird shapes rather than rectangles representing doors. Um, but yeah, so that's that's what I'm working with right now. So let's look at how you would go about, I'm gonna go this, through this backwards actually. So one of the things we talked about in the last video was how to take a bunch of line work and change it into faces that I can interact with once I'm in SketchUp. So that's what this ended up as. Uh, in here, I have a bunch of closed shapes. I could take these closed shapes now and I could pull these up to whatever, say it's a nine foot high wall. I pull it up to nine feet and I can just come around here and I can double click on each of these like this. And if this was the geometry I got to, this is probably the process I would go about. Uh, some of these are turning out inside out. That's okay, I'll show you how to fix that. That's pretty quick and easy. Um, but I would probably do something like this to get all of these up into 3D space, knowing that I'm gonna have to come back and make some changes, right? So my garage door, for example, the garage steps down uh, like a foot. So I'd have to drop my, my walls down there. Um, this front deck where this porch is, uh, that steps down from the front door, not a full foot, but uh, you know a couple inches. So I'd have to make sure to do that. But I wanted, I'd wanna take each of these masses of walls and bring them up. Any of these that turn out backwards like this, uh, you can do a couple things. I can try to group select, get all of the walls that are backwards, or I could do this. I can re try that. I'll try this. I don't know if this is gonna work. I'll reverse one face, and then I'll say orient faces, 
and it flips all those connected pieces. So that's probably, well, it depends on, in this one, you might be able to come in here and just select this, but I have to be careful because there are other faces like this trim right here um, that I may or may not wanna. So maybe I can, if I go select like this, there we go. That's just a careful selection thing. And then I can say reverse edges. So really that comes down to what kind of geometry you have and you wanna reverse. Anyhow, uh, yeah, so this is going to get me, this one's gonna be harder to do, but so this one I might just say uh, reverse face and then orient face to get all those the same. All right, cool. And then I have my three columns out here, easy enough to fix. All right, so in this case, if this was the geometry I was presented with where I had all these closed faces, this might be the way to go. And like I said, now I might have to come in here, do a little work, break some edges and then pull these garage walls down a little further because they're gonna sit down on a slab lower or whatever. Um, but this would get me started. Because I don't have detailed window door information, I just have 2D breaks, I would probably leave it like this and then come in and add in window geometry, uh, door geometry as I had it. But this would get me my walls to start. So that's one way to do it. And that's how I would do it if I had those closed in shapes. All right. Over here, I have a couple options. And this is where I start to look at how do I actually want my walls delivered to me? You know, so how do I actually want this? So let's look at this interior wall real quick right here. Okay, so this wall runs from here to here and it has a door here. There's a couple things I could do. So I could come in, I could come into this group and start modifying the geometry, draw a line across here to get a closed face, take that one piece, pull it up. I could do that. I could basically emulate what I did over here. Um, but I wanna show a different way to consider doing this. So if I feel pretty good about my snap points, if I click from here to here, it says that's exactly three and a half. If I drag that down to here, it says 15, six and a half. I could verify that on a PDF or printed plans. That's correct. If I know that's all right, then what I might do is keep this in its own group. In fact, I might right click here and lock so I can't mess with it and then just draw my walls over top. So with this, I might want one wall that goes from here all the way to here, and I'll pull that individual wall up to nine foot, and then grab that and make it a group. And now that's its own wall. So I could do this kind of thing. I could just buzz through uh, this whole thing. And with this, this means I can do things like I can control my overlaps when I make build this wall, which one's gonna lap through, which one's gonna be short, make that into a group. Um, and this is kind of a quick and easy way to get all my walls in. Um, like I said, a lot of this, I'm at the point now where a lot of what I might do depends on what you want your finer, final deliverable to be. So, if I don't care about this, if I don't care about where each of these pieces are, I could do something like I could come in here, trace from here to here. Again, verifying my dimensions as I go, that's exactly 12 foot 11, okay. I could do something like this, and then I could make all of this geometry one big old group like that. There you go, and then that could be pulled up. If that's how I want my geometry to come out, I could do that as well. I know I'm presenting you with options, but unfortunately, it's not always as straightforward as uh, everybody should do the same thing because everybody builds different. The information they need out of SketchUp is different. If I'm not building, if I'm just doing architectural, then this might be the way to go. If I'm actually sending these to like a, a wall panel plant or something like that, then I might have to be more considerate and go, okay, well, this is going to be a separate wall right here. So that means this wall right here is going to have to actually extend through. So I have to be conscious of how my panels overlap, that sort of thing. But again, if I'm not worried about that, actually making them, then it doesn't matter. The other thing to think about here is doors and windows. So again, if I'm going to come in later and I'm going to draw my, my windows in here, then I might be able to just go like this and pull this up. If I need my doors and windows in here, then I might do something different, right? So I might come in here and I might break this across like that and break like this. And then these two end pieces 
can come all the way up to nine foot. This one will come up to whatever my sill height is. And then I can copy this face, option bring that up, and then pull that down to wherever my header height is. And then that could be my wall. Uh, it really depends on a couple of things. One thing it depends on is like I said, what do you need out of this model? If this is the level of detail you need, then go ahead and model it. If what you need is this, and you're gonna come in and insert windows and doors later. The next video I do will talk about some options for inserting doors and windows, but that may be the thing you wanna do. This is really up to you. This, I, I think this is the ideal thing to work off of, where I have dimensions that I'm pretty sure are correct, or maybe I've nailed them. Maybe I know these are perfect. That's awesome. If I had more control over this file when I was exporting, I'd probably export it without trim. Because one of the things that's going to happen if I try to make this wall, I got to make sure I snap to this point and not this point or this point. So I'll click right there. If I didn't, <clears throat> excuse me, have my that trim there, then it would be a lot easier to make sure I'm only snapping to the point I need. But right now, if I zoom in a little bit, that looks good. I can pull that up. Oops, pull that up to that height and then make that my next wall. Um, so yeah, so there's some options there depending on what you need. Um, so these are both good options. Working off a bitmap or an image is not necessarily a terrible thing. As long as you have access to some decent dimensions that you know you can verify. So if I come in here and uh, let's say I want to draw this, this front wall right here. I click a line right here. I drag my line over to here and I can kind of inference around. I can see, okay, that looks like it's maybe about 11 foot four but I would want to check that against the actual dimensions on a plan to see if that's actually correct. This is not, like I said, it, it is what it is. If this is what I have to work off, uh, it's not a bad thing to have, right? So if I know for sure my exterior walls are five and a half inches, then I can put 5.5 and I can draw that in. Again, because I don't have uh, any edges in the actual image, I can't snap to anything. So I have to use dimensions to draw everything in. But then I can pull that up to nine foot and I can, if I want to, make that a group. From here, there's kind of a nice option I have is I could come in here, I could draw over five and a half, I could pull that up over down, and then I could pull that out to wherever that next location is. So let's say, okay, I wanna bring that out two foot and then I can triple click make that a group. And then I can come over here again, come over five and a half inches, come up, basically just draw this rectangle real quick. And then I can pull that out to wherever that needs to go next. So I'm assuming that that's also two foot. And then just keep making that a group. Or like I said, if you're not worried about grouping, if all this can be one piece, then I can skip over that. So let's go explode that group. And then I can just come over here, draw my line over five and a half inches, go like that, and then just pull that out to wherever that needs to go. Again, now's when I'd have to go verify dimensions, but if that's all I need, then I can just keep coming across, break off that one dimension I need, pull that across to wherever that's supposed to go. Um, let's say 27 foot. And then I could actually have all that geometry in there that way. And again, this, like I was saying before, could break at windows. I could uh, run them long. It's really up to me. Maybe I have my exteriors in one group and interiors in another. So I get all my exteriors in. Then I come in here for my interiors and make sure that I'm, you know, drawing. In this case, I believe this is going to be 3.5, which is my interior wall width. And then I could have a set of interior walls. Take that across to, I don't know, wherever that is. What does that look like? Looks like 15 foot six. Again, I would probably want to make sure I'm uh, doing this off of a set of plans. Um, looks like it's a 5.5 interior wall, probably a structural wall right there, something like that. Come across 3.5, there we go. I could take that up and then I could pull that across to wherever that goes. Um, so, Something, I'm just gonna pull some more. We'll see, 25 feet. Um, so yeah, so then that could be the start of my interior group, which would separate my interiors from my exteriors, which might be something I need to do for like square footage or, or 
reporting of some sort. Really, it all comes down to how do you need your geometry out of this model? Um, are you, is it strictly architectural visualization? Then you can have all these pieces together. This is gonna look nicer if I draw it in a section view because I'm gonna have all these pieces are connected together. Over here, where every wall is separate, well, it's not bad, but I'm gonna have this break at every wall because each one is a separate group. Um, that really all comes down to what you need in order to get walls out of SketchUp. SketchUp, remember, is just a modeling tool. It's gonna to do whatever you wanna do, but you do have to tell it what geometry, what information you want out of it, and you have to tell it by putting in the, uh, the kind of stuff that you actually need out. So there you go. Three options, working off of a bitmap, working off of lines, or working off of faces to get you whatever kind of walls you actually need. So that got a little free form at the end and I apologize. I know some people watch videos and they're like, just tell me how to do it. And unfortunately, because there are so many different ways to build, there are so many different ways to design, this, this is gonna depend on your workflow. Are you working with some sort of automated tool that's gonna to just take your stuff and cut it? Or is this gonna be something you print out and then hand it to somebody and they figure out how to, how to build the walls? Um, is it is, is getting built at all? Is this just for a picture? Depending what you want is going to change how you do this, but hopefully this gives you enough options so that you can create the kind of walls you need in the models from the amount of data you have. If you like that video, click like down below. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe. We create several videos each and every week and you'll be notified of all of them if you subscribe. Most importantly though, leave us a message down below. If there's a specific process in the design flow that you have, do you have questions about, you want to know about, let us know about that. If you have a better way of doing this, maybe there's an extension that I don't know about that makes this quick and easy. Let me know about that too. Or if you have another idea, something totally out of there, out there, you know, how do I model of this or how do I model of that? Leave that down in the comments too. We like making these videos a lot, but we like them even more when they're showing something you want to see. Thank you.